But first, it was the presidential visit that took the world by surprise last night when Joe Biden was spotted walking around the centre of Kiev alongside President Zelensky. He was in the country ahead of the one-year anniversary of the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine, and Joe Biden affirmed America's unwavering and unflagging commitment to Ukraine's democracy, sovereignty and territorial integrity. Putin thought Ukraine was weak and the West was divided. He was counting on the inability to keep NATO united. He thought he could outlast us. I don't think he's thinking that right now. And one year later, the evidence is right here in this room. We stand here together. Joining me now to discuss the significance of the trip and what the security involved in getting Biden to Kiev in the first place is the Director of Strategic Analysis Australia, Michael Shoebridge. Michael, lovely to have you on the show again. It's a logistical nightmare for the US president to travel anywhere, let alone a war zone like Kiev, and especially in secret. What did you make of the significance of President Biden's visit? Well, Corey, I think it shows that Biden and the whole US administration know that personal leadership really matters. And really, the person that showed us all that over the last year is the guy that Joe Biden went to visit, Ukrainian President Zelensky. Personal leadership will matter this year even more because the Ukrainians are absolutely dependent on Western military technology and supplies, and they need a lot of it, and they need it fast. That's really what Joe Biden's visit was about. Yeah, there was a peculiarity that wasn't lost on me, though. The White House uh, released that they told the Kremlin in advance of the visit. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan told reporters they did it some hours before his departure for deconfliction purposes. Is this a regular process where there's a proxy war going on and one leader is going to visit a place of some significant danger? No, it isn't. In fact, Jake Sullivan went on to say that he won't tell us what the Russian response was. And you know, who knows what it was? I don't know many Russian swear words. But really, I think it was banking on the uh, Putin not being an utter madman uh, way of looking at things. You know, Putin's made nuclear threats, uh, but he hasn't crossed that threshold because he has a, a vestige of sanity. And I think the White House calculation was even Putin wouldn't be mad enough to want to kill a US president because Americans react very badly to violence against them. Think what happened after 9-11. Yes, it's true. Uh, it, it appears that there are still some people who do not want to escalate this war. We'll wait and see if more will join them. But let's stay on the topic of the Ukraine and what's going on there. US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken has actually warned the Chinese or his counterpart uh, that any moves by China to support Russia with weaponry would cross a red line. Now, this smelt a bit of hypocrisy, given that America is arming Ukraine. Um, isn't China allowed to support whomever it chooses to? Well, uh, that very much depends on whether you want to see an authoritarian world dominated by aggressive authoritarian leaders like Xi in Beijing and Vladimir Putin in Moscow. Um, I think it's absolutely right to see the Ukrainian fight as critical to the future of how the world works. And certainly Ukraine really relies on Western military technology. It's proving superior to the Russian equipment. That's good news for us. But what we talk about far less is that Putin and the Russian economy can't sustain Russia's fight by itself. He needs all the help from his authoritarian partners he can get. And Iranian missiles and North Korean ammunition aren't going to do the job. He's really after Chinese military assistance. <laughs> 